Okay, waiting for everybody to catch up with us here. Okay, we're going to take a break. So we'll take a 10 minute break and we're going to come back and go to the final part of our book. So I'm going to go back to the back of the room to the room number eight and then I'm going to have a seat and rest for a few minutes and you can go to the washroom, grab your cup of coffee or whatever you need to do. to a break then.
Alright, we're gonna just hurry up and move quickly and move right into the vocabulary. Everybody follow me. Everybody's catching up with us. You should have seen the online video lecture, so I did all the vocabulary then, of course. So I don't need to do too much here. And it is a little bit strange to have vocabulary like this in a chapter that's on body language, right? Because the whole point of body language is you don't need the vocab, you vary based on your body language. But anyway, I still want to practice English as much as possible. And many of the words here are oriented towards building up an understanding between the two negotiators. So it kind of makes a little bit of sense. To go ahead over the fire block. The first thing I just want to emphasize, however, is you don't want to go crazy with your body. That's kind of a key point. So I have this picture here you can see on the slides. You can tilt your head up, use your control and mouse, so you can fly up. And body language is good, but not going crazy with it, right? Of course, we're going to be playing inside of our RPG. We're using our avatar. We have a limited amount of body language, but still, there is some body language we can use, as in sitting in here, you can smell my body language. So, body language really helps to convey some of that feeling and help make your meaning clear. And I think you can even do it with your avatar. Okay, okay so I think we've got catching up with us but we're going to move forward in the interest of saving time so we're going to jump right over to room number two the introduction everybody follow me to introduction
Alright, we're getting everybody together, so I'm gonna work on the introduction a little bit. ideas I think similar to what we were talking about with questions number one idea is you can use body language to help make yourself understood more clearly that's very helpful number two you can use body language to convince or to push or to um, kind of encourage the other side to believe something that may not really be true so this means you can use your body language to make the other side misunderstand or guess wrong about some of your secret information. A good example would be acting surprised with your body language. If you pull back or you look shocked or your eyes are wide open, this means that you're surprised. Now, why would you be surprised? You'd be surprised because the other side has given you a price, maybe, or has given you an offer that's very close or over your resistance point. If that's true, then you act surprised. Whoa, that price is way too low. That kind of way, if you're the seller. Or, whoa, that price is way too high. And you don't need to say anything. You can just act surprised. And by acting surprised, you can really convince the other side that they're close to your resistance point or even over the resistance point. So that's kind of the two ideas for body language. One, to actually make yourself easier to understand, that is, to, you know, make the communication smoother, help the other side understand clearly. Number two is to kind of fool the other side into thinking something is true even though it may not be true. That's, you know, part of the distributive bargaining situation, right? Okay, I think that does the introduction fairly simple. So everybody follow me, we're going to go into the dialogue quickly. a couple of the key ones that are really important to 
helping you with your body language. Right? Of course, one of the key ones that we always talk about when we talk about body language in negotiation and business in general is the idea of eye contact. Eye contact. Why is eye contact important? Well, I think we often assume this is so basic everybody understands it but when you're in the negotiation you may not realize you're making or not making eye contact so there's two things to be thinking of when you make eye contact one is don't stare at someone for a long time and i think you're a little bit crazy of course but the other one is you do need to give some sincere uh, long eye contact and this helps people believe that you're serious that you're honest. Now, it may not be true. You may not be serious. You may not be honest. If you are serious and honest, then you don't make eye contact. So you're looking at a paper or you're looking at some computer terminal or some book that has your notes on it. Well, this is going to make people think you're not serious. It's going to hurt you a lot. And the problem with that is that you cannot even push the other side to believe false information. They're not going to believe your true information or your false information if they don't believe you're being serious and honest. So that's kind of a key point there. Next key point is to remember to use your body language in a very purposeful way. Now what do I mean by that purposeful way? What I mean to say is, you need to use your body language because you know what you're doing. You're thinking about it, right? So when they give you, when the other side gives you an offer or a price, are you going to try to convince them that that price is over your resistance point? If that's what you're going to do, then you need to react in a way that makes them think, whoa, my price must be very close to the resistance point, right? So if they give you a price and you're smiling and happy, then they're going to think, hey, no problem. But then you say, in words, you say, oh, this is too low. It is below my resistance point. But your body language says, no, it's okay. You're not near your resistance point. Then the other side will think you're not being honest. You're not telling the truth. So it's important to use your body language in a way that you're thinking about. And the second part of that is, if you don't think about it, you might use your body language in a way you're not even thinking of. And if you're not thinking of it, it may be giving away your secrets and you don't know. That's what we call subconscious, right? Or just doing it by accident, right? Your, your body's sending signals that you don't really want to send. And that gives away your secrets. So the key to the body language is, is think about it. How do you train yourself to think about it? Well, the way you do that is practice. And I know it sounds maybe hard to do, but one of the best ways to practice is stand in front of a mirror and practice a negotiation. Practice some of the lines that are inside of our book, especially the practice dialogues, or practice with a friend and use a video camera. It's actually the best way. That's why I want you guys to use video because so you really get to see yourself talking. You get to see what it's all about, how you look like from another person's perspective. So when you see yourself from that other direction, not through your own eyes, but through somebody else's eyes, that's when you really truly see your own body language. So not an easy thing to do certainly not very comfortable. We don't like doing that because it makes us feel a little bit uncomfortable, even myself. But you get over it and you'll learn quickly it really helps. So what are some of the things you can practice? Well, I think one of the best ones, as I said, is surprise. If your body language says surprise, even though your words say, mm, we'll think about it, we'll consider it, your body language sends a signal. And what's the best thing to send a signal about for surprise? best thing is to make the other side feel they are over your resistance point. In other words, this is just too far. There's no way I can accept this. 
Another one you can do is this idea of uh, a relaxed smile, taking it easy, listening, and then confirming information. So you say things like, mm, I see, okay, so you mean that your price is 10% above last year's price. I see, I see. Mm -hmm. To use reinforcements like that. Now, what this does, it helps the other side think that they're making their information to you clear. So that's kind of called positive listening, right? Oh, I see. Tell me more. Mm -hmm. I understand. It doesn't mean you agree. It doesn't mean you agree, but it's just saying, I hear you. I understand you. I know what you're saying. Okay? So that's called positive listening. Very, very helpful. And in inside of our... Uh, virtual space, our virtual world, this is also very helpful because you don't know if people can hear you or not. And so when you say things to them, you push the talk and you say, ah, oh, yes, I see, I see, mm -hmm, I see. That really helps them feel they can, they, that they're making themselves clear. Of course, um, another idea would be this, in the book we call poker face. Right? What's a poker face? A poker face means you don't look positive, you don't look negative, you don't give away any information at all. So a poker face means you just look blank. The other side is very hard to tell what is it that you're thinking. And so a poker face is great when you don't want to give away any information and you're just listening. A poker face can also make the other side feel a little bit nervous because they're not sure if their offer is being seen as positive or being seen as negative. So poker face can really help you at certain times. However, you don't want to have a poker face all the time because then you're not sending any signals. Of course, you want to send signals. That's a key point. Why do you want to send signals? Because you want to show the other side something that they think is your secret information even though it may not be your real secret information, right? So that's kind of a key point. Poker face is good. It's great if you're going to make the other side feel nervous. But if what you're trying to do is convince the other side of something, show the other side something like your target price or your resistance price, which may be true or not true, then you, a poker face is not going to help you. So surprise is great, active listening is really good, and a poker face is useful in special situations where you don't want to give out any information, and maybe you want the other side to feel a little bit nervous. A good example would be if the negotiation has a time limit, that means you're running out of time, maybe you have to finish by noon tomorrow. But now, you don't say yes, you don't say no, you don't say you like the offer, you don't say you dislike the offer, you just have a poker face. And the other side begins to get nervous, they're like, whoa, what's happening, we're running out of time. They don't seem to have any reaction, maybe they don't like it. Okay? And then maybe the other side will change their prices all by themselves, without even being pressured by you, to feel pressure just from your poker face. I guess the good thing about being an avatar in a virtual world is we all seem to have poker faces. <laughs> so, you can't really see much on your faces from looking here. But you can control your faces, you know. If you get close to each other, you can have facial expressions, right? So we can have active listening. So when somebody's talking to us, in our avatar space here, we can go ahead and we can say uh, yes. And we can say no. So if I say yes, that's kind of like, yes, I'm listening to you. Right? Can everybody try that with me? Yes, yes, I understand. I'm listening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see, I see. Click the gesture and use your head nod like that, right? That's called a head nod. Yes, yes, I see, I see. Yes, yes, okay. Use your gesture, use your avatar gesture. That's it, that's it, you got it. Some more people doing it now. So you can use your avatar to be an active listener by nodding your head like that. A lot of people still not doing it though. Do you know, does everybody know how to use your avatar gestures? I think you do because we've practiced them before. So inside your window menu, 
open up the gestures menu. Inside your window menu, open up gestures, and then click the gesture that says yes. Yes. Okay, so that would be active listening, right? You can active listen. You can also try being active, but maybe giving a negative signal. How do we give a negative signal? No. No. Try your avatar's no gesture. That will nod your uh, head like that. Shake your head, actually. Nod your head means yes. Shake your head means no. Okay, that's it. There you go. Okay, and then of course we can use some other gestures if we want to be very positive and we say, hey, that's great, you can do a cheer. You can do a cheer, so that's some good body language right there. Yeah, that's great. We're all for that. Great. Great. Everybody try a cheer. Yeah, good, good, very good. Of course, you can also use your clap. Say, hmm, yes, that's what I'm looking for. That's some positive reinforcement. Yes, that's, that's good body language. Say, yes, yes, mm -hmm, that's good. Okay, and if you want to act like you're not paying attention, you can act like you're on your cell phone. So I can call my phone and just ignore you. So this is kind of very negative, right? I'm just not listening to you. I'm going to ignore you. I need to talk on my phone. I'm going to talk on my phone, ignore you. Of course, you can act a little bit surprised by maybe laughing and saying, Huh, that price? No way, I can't take that price. That is way too low. Huh, no way, I can never do that. What you even say, Oh, this, that price is way too low. I need to sit down. The price is so low. I need, I can't take it. I need to sit down. That's, there's no way. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so your avatar does have body language, and uh, if you use it, it can really make it can make the other side think something, and you can encourage them maybe to understand you better, or you may actually be trying to fool them into thinking something else is true. Okay, so that wraps up this part. Be straightforward, I think. So we've had a lot of things we've covered so far in our semester. We're just about halfway through. So right now you've got all these ideas about how to think about a negotiation. What is a negotiation? How to make your goal package, right? How to come up with a strategy and then tactics and we have some very very practical advice that tells us to you know, ask the two questions how important is this negotiation how important is the relationship to make your strategy we have some really good input on tactics from our book exactly what to say and what to do for some tactics so this is a really great way to be practical and a little bit later we talked about the two types of negotiation right distributive and integrative distributive and integrative and one thing i've always emphasized is negotiation is not easy doing business is not easy you're going to end up with a lot of negotiation that is very distributive that is the other side is going to want to not give you anything and they're going to want to get everything they can of course we also had integrative, which means kind of sharing your secret information, working together. Right, that's nice, that's great, that's wonderful. That's actually the best situation possible, but very rare, I think. Very rare, because both sides have to trust each other. Both sides have to be on the same wavelength, thinking the same thing, following the same strategy. Okay, and then finally, we just talked about some practical things, like 
how to address questions when they're not really questions or how to ask questions to help the other side think something is true even though it may not be true. We're always talking about that. How to make the other side think something because you want to influence their thoughts. You want to influence what they think your resistance point is, what your price target is. You want them to think something. And then we talked about body language, how we can use body language to reinforce that. So that's pretty straightforward too, I think. Okay, so that wraps up our book coverage. And after this, we're going to play the RPG. So what I want you to do is watch the video for the RPG score sheet introduction. Then this week, I'm also going to upload another video that shows you how to use the dice rolling, how to roll the dice. It looks complicated, but usually my students are all pretty smart. They figure it out pretty fast, and it ends up not being complicated. I do want you to download the Excel spreadsheet. I think uh, Janice will email you a link, or our system will email you a link, and you can start playing with it. We do want to remember the goal of the game is to practice. The goal is not to cheat. So if you find a problem or if you find something that you think is wrong, please do email me or email the teaching assistant and I'll try to fix it, right? So it's always possible there's something wrong in my Excel sheet or there's something wrong with the game. Some kind of rule is wrong or something's just basically wrong. Okay, I want you to share that with me so we can improve it. Last year I had a lot of really good feedback from my students. In fact, we've been making this RPG over the last six years. So we began in the classroom, we, we began by using paper and using actual dice to create random uh, numbers. And now we're using the virtual space, the virtual world, and we're using virtual dice, and we're using Excel sheets to keep our school. So things have gotten uh, easier, but maybe a little bit more complicated. So I'm always happy to have input and for you to tell me where something is wrong. It is important that you work with your group closely. So please share with your group, have a meeting with your group, maybe even two meetings. I know you're busy this week with midterm exams. What we're going to do is next week we're going to have the first RPG, which is going to be a practice RPG. That means there's not going to be any score that counts. It's just for practice. Still, we're going to try to take it serious, and we're going to try to do our best. Right? And then after that, so next next week, we begin the real RPGs, and in that case, the scores do count. Okay, so for now, all you need to do is get the Excel sheet and begin to practice fooling around with that a little bit. Understand the formulas, how they work. I'm going to send you a product just before class begins next week. And then you need to plan out your strategy, think of your goal package, think of some tactics, and then we need to work on things. What I want to do is one more thing before we leave today. We still have a few more minutes of class, and so I want to show you the place we're going to negotiate at. And that place is on another island, but it's a special island with our little offices. Maybe you visited there already, but you can follow me. So first, Let's go out to the main hall. So everybody, follow me to the main hall.